Oh, wow. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for dropping in. Oh, there's a good word here. Uh, I'd like to ask you to join me and let's fellowship together on this edition of the Prophetic Chronicles. Talk to you in a minute. In First Peter, chapter four, no, Second Peter, chapter four. Excuse me. No, First Peter, chapter four. Brother Peter wrote these words in verse fifteen. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And in the Greek, that word house means family of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteousness, excuse me, and if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him and well doing as unto a faithful creator. Judgment must begin at the house of God. There's people that have left. There's those of us that remain that God wants to bless in many areas. But we are fighting against what should be anyway. Some people fight against each other. Some Christians fight against other Christians. Some leaders that's up and coming fight against leaders that God already had them where you are now. So they're able to be used by the Holy Ghost to grab your hand and say, come on, let's go. To bring you up. But you don't want to go up because the two cents worth of stuff you know now, you want to stay right where you are with that. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to miss seasons. You're going to miss blessings. You're going to miss so much because you refuse to grow. So this part of the message are for the warriors. In Ephesians 1 and 3. One of my favorite scriptures. It says these words. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Check me. That's what I say, right? I hope you're in the Bible. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Our glory in heavenly places in Christ. God said, the blessings before they become natural are spiritual. And the reason you can't see them is because they are spiritual. You have to discern them. They are spiritual. You, 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 you're saying, I don't see it. I don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe this. I don't see it. God ain't told me nothing. It's the blessing is spiritual. God would tell you if you stop everything you're doing, and go before him, Father, 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. Please reveal this truth unto me. Are you trying to do something in my life? Because if you are, I don't want to miss it. Because if you're doing it, it's for my benefit. If you're doing it, it's going to be a great thing and a blessed thing because I need this if it's coming from you. I will be still and hear you in Jesus' name. Amen. And then you wait. Well, I have a family. You can wait and still have a family. Well, I have parents. You can wait and still have parents. I have children. You can wait and still be a, be a parent. Because if God is trying to bless you with something, he knows this is what you need because he knows what your future holds. Yes, Lord. God said to the brothers and sisters that he's trying to bless with a marriage. How dare you? How dare you critique or challenge God? Look at your past. Brothers, look at the sisters you was just recently with, said the Lord. I don't know you, so this is just going out. I don't know to who, but God is talking to somebody. Look at the sisters you was just with. <laughs> What did she put you through? What, what? How did she carry herself? When God told you to say to her, the Lord said, let's go this way, which way did she go? God allowed you to be removed out of that equation. Why? Because it was stunting your growth. It was hindering the mission. Now, he's trying to bless you with the right sister. The right one. Those of us, me too, that are waiting for the Lord to send our wife, we don't have to go looking for her. Again, whoso findeth the wife, findeth the good thing, findeth in the Hebrew, look it up. Find it do not mean to go and look. In one context, it does. But when it comes to that, to the wife thing, that's not what it means. It don't mean to go out and look for her. And even if the Lord send you out, Genesis chapter 24. Hmm, the Lord get ready to use me to do a sermon. He's giving it to me. Now, I'm going to tell you the title because ain't nobody going to deliver like the Lord give it to me. It's going to be called... God officiates a wedding. <laughs> now, Genesis 24, verse 1, And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell, but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure, which means perhaps, the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land. Must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest? And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land. He shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from this. God is saying his wife is on her way. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear 
from this my oath. Only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swear to him concerning the matter. Notice that. That's a Jewish custom. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed. For all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Okay, so he went. Some of my some are saying, well, he went looking for her. Watch this. And he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and shew kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water, and let it come to pass, here goes the checklist, that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, oh glory, and I will give thy camels drink also let the same be she that thou hast appointed for my servant isaac and thereby shall i know that thou hast shewed kindness unto my master he prayed he sought god and it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. <laughs> and the de oh glory, I hear you, Lord. I feel like shouting. I wish I knew how. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the trough and ran again unto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. He wanted to know, is this the one? Lord, you led me to pray a certain thing. And she's doing it. Is this the one? Is this her? Oh, God. Is this her? The Lord told him what to pray because God knew he was going to send Rebecca. Is this the one? He had all authority from Abraham. Abraham trusted him. He had all authority to pick a wife for Isaac. Is this the one? And again, we see us prophets, I'm a prophet as well, revelatory information between the scriptures. It was God that led him to pray to God. He didn't know no one prays on their own for we know not what we ought to pray for. Romans 8, 26. No one prays on their own when you're praying to God and you're walking with God. He tells you what to pray to him because he know what he's going to do. The servant prayed. Before he finished, here she come. The checklist. God will tell you, like he told me about my wife, she going to be this way, that way, this way, that way. I met her. This way, that way. She going to be this way and that way. And I met her. He put her right in my path. I was minding my own business. All of a sudden, God said, look. And I looked. He put her right in my path. And I said, let me, let me watch her. Let me listen to her. Let me watch her work. 
Let me see some stuff God used her to minister. I need to see because I know where God got me at, and I can't have an airhead for a wife, and I know God's not going to send me a wife that is not learned or teachable in Scripture. He's not going to do that. If she, what she don't know, the Lord will bless me to share with her, and she'll be teachable because God made women to be poured into, to be receptive, and men are projected. Men are the hunters. The women are the hunted. There's times God going to show the man of God, that's your wife, and she might not hear God right away. More than likely, she won't. She ain't going to hear God right away unless she is totally consecrated, lined up before God, even have her head covered like 1 Corinthians 11 and 5 say. Because she worships God and worship him according to the ordinance God gave in 1 Corinthians 11 and 5. If she's that strong and that deep, oh, she'll hear him. But if she don't hear him right away, but the man of God hears God, he got to be patient with her. And he got to pray her through. The servant said, the scripture says here, and the man wondering at her held his peace to wit, meaning to know whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Is this her? So far, so good. And it came to pass as the camels had done drinking that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. That's how Hebrews taught. They don't say shekels. They go shekels. And said, whose daughter art thou? Now he got to ask this. Because she can't be a Canaanite. She got to be from Abraham. Excuse me, Abraham's lineage. Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee. Is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. And the man bowed his head and worshipped the Lord. <laughs> and he said, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Sisters, now it's your turn. If God has sent a man of God to you, check him. Watch him. See how he walk. See how he live. Just because you didn't hear God, don't mean God is not trying to bless you. Here was Rebecca, the subject of the blessing. She was getting ready. Her life the next day was going to be turned all the way around. If you read further in the chapter, her family tried to hinder her. Sometimes you can't tell everybody what God is doing. Don't be going to nobody saying, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Because if there's other women who are tired of being alone, and they see that you were alone, and now God is giving bless you, and you're asking them, what do they think about the blessing? They're not going to tell you. The truth. Because there's some of them that want what you have before God bless you to meet that husband to be. They wanted your anointing. That's why they teamed up with you. <laughs> they wanted your anointing. If you got nice clothes and they're asking you, can they wear your jacket or wear your clothes or wear your skirt or wear your dress, they want your dress. They want your clothes. They want your raiment. They might want to be you. 
If you notice, if you say a word, next thing you know, they saying it. They want to be you. They want to talk like you. They'll lift you up more than they will God because they want to be like you and you. But you don't let them. Rebecca had her damsels around her, her maidens and stuff, but they were on her side. They weren't jealous. There are some people that the Holy Ghost have in your life that you can talk to. And that will give you sound advice. Sound advice. And know the end result going to be? Well, sister, what did the Lord say? So now we're back again to you need to spend time with God. Look at the checklist. If the man of God is establishing ministry, if he's establishing the Lord, if God is using him to do great things, if the man is known in, the, in, in his city or state or whatever, if the man is not all in women's face, if he's not chasing women, if he ain't got to call nobody to break up nothing because he's living a single life, which he just works solely for God. If he prays before y'all talk, if he's willing to pray with you after y'all talk, if he's willing to have Bible study with you, you and him, if he acknowledges your anointing, if he welcomes your anointing, then where's the problem? Where's the problem? Well, he might be a crook. Well, if he don't ask you for nothing, that cancels that. He might not be real because I met people in my past that, well, why are you still there? Excuse me, Joshua. Move out the way, man. Y'all don't see this yet. Move out the way. Why are you there? Why are you back there? God has you here. People are watching you. People are watching you. They see how God is using you. They see how you're moving by yourself and how awesome you are, sister. There's even men trying to holler at you and talk to you. And I heard God say something else. In Genesis 24. Watch this. Thank you, Lord. I saw something, and the Lord said, Say something. Here it is. Verse 16 of Genesis 24. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin. Neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. Some, some women are saying, well, I'm not a virgin. Watch this. Watch this. See if you catch this revelation. If you didn't have the husband yet, and don't say boyfriend, because that don't count. God don't give boyfriends. Even when I see on Facebook or other places, ministers talking about in a relationship, that's not God. That, that's not God. You compromising. You settling. You just wanted some stuff. <laughs> the bottom line is, sister, if you have not met the man from God, for you, yet you're still a virgin. Well, I got kids. They didn't have the woman of God. They had the natural you. Mm. They had the you that settled for that type of guy. That's who they had. They had the carnal you. 
They had the you that's always in the way when God want to bless you. They had the you that's always in the way when God is trying to move. They had the you that would even challenge the blessing God send you because you basing your future on what you went through back there when you shouldn't. I would never do that because God taught me don't do that. Yeah, I went through some things. I was married before. As the ministry grew, the ex-wife, she couldn't walk with the ministry. She got dropped off. God allowed it to happen. It wasn't me. I didn't drop her off. God allowed it to happen. Because God said, where I'm getting ready to take you, she can't go. You don't believe it? Look. And I was looking and I was like, wow. I had to go through the disappointment, but it's all right. Because look what God got me now. The ministry has grown, incorporated in nine states. And when you are incorporated in one state, you got that whole state for territory. Some ministers only got a building. Well, not all got a building because some of their buildings closed, but some ministers got a building. But God bless this ministry to be incorporated in nine states. The ministry is at on three in three connected, affiliated with three TV stations and collectively feeding about 12 cities. And it's going to be more accounting. What's the vision? BET. Oh, that's where I'm headed. So I got two degrees in television production, in studio and field, and editing, and lighting. When y'all see this edited, and you see what's on the back of the screen behind me, God used me to do that. Praise the Lord. The vision is BET. And God said, your wife is going with you. He's sending me to North Carolina, and he said, your wife is going with you. She's going to live in a place that she ain't got to pay no rent at because the ministry is, is, is going to be self-sufficient and already is. You can't challenge the blessing. See, I can't tell her all of that because if I tell her that, that might change. Oh, wow. No, I don't want no oh, wow. Notice the anointing on my life. Because that's the woman he put in my life, that's in my path right now. I'm noticing her anointing. I love her anointing. That's where I'm at. That's what I notice. And she's very powerful in the Lord. Very powerful prophetess. Secondary office evangelist. Now, this book says our evangelists were in the office of helps first. If they were a man, evangelist, then before he became that, he was a deacon, like Philip. There is no such thing as deaconess in the Bible, so she can't say, well, I'm a deaconess. No, you're not, not according to this, because it don't exist. Scratch that. But you could be in the office of helps, same thing. Office of helps. You're helping people. You're encouraging people. You're exhorting people. And evangelists, when God has anointed someone in the office of prophet or prophetess, before they enter that office, they have to come through the room of evangelists first. Why? Because evangelists are exhorters and encouragers. So when they get into the prophetic office, they will encourage and exhort. Wait a minute. Also, evangelists, they praise. Lord, they praise God. But prophets and prophetesses, they worship. So when she gets in a prophetic office, she's going to be part evangelist, secondary office. In college, it would be a minor. Her major would be prophetess. Like my office, my dominant office, my major is apostle. My secondary office is prophet. But of course, the Lord used me in all three of the other gifts too because apostles are the only ones, the only ones, Scripture says, us brothers are the only ones that walk in all four of the other offices. I know people think apostle sounds deep, so much so that they want to intrude and be one because they done put together a ministry. I got two 
clergy rings, two apostle rings. I ain't even got them on. Why? That's not what anoints me. <laughs> I'm anointed regardless. I can take this robe off and still teach most ministers under the table. Thank you, Jesus. Anyway, sisters, you are a virgin until you meet the man that God has for you. Because you're going to love him in a way you never love nobody. You'll be loved by him in a way you've never been loved by nobody. Because God himself preserves you. Whew, wow, that was deep. That was deep and such a blessing. Thanks for joining me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you the next time where we dip back into the library to notice the prophetic chronicles. God bless you and enjoy your day.